All right, we are going to install Aspire version 12 for the first time, and the first time I'm seeing it, so we're just going to go ahead and double click to get the install process going. I am not going to migrate it this time, just going to go ahead and hit close and skip the account. And just going to close all of this initial setup. Good maximize. All right, yeah, uh, it's looking uh, a little bit different. Some uh, newer refreshed icons. Uh, it's a little uh, clean, refreshing, brighter. So the initial uh, page looks the same. So we'll go ahead and create a new file. The same options. It looks like we have a different type of icon uh, that is showing where the zero is being delivered. It's a little more clear. Datum points are just uh, graphically uh, looking different. We'll say OK to this. Seeing a couple icon changes and some new items that have appeared across the top. We have uh, our sheets, uh, which I don't believe was in the earlier version. Could be, but I don't believe so. We have our layer list, which was there, but is organized slightly different. Then it looks like this is uh, the component list uh, for the 3D um, component aspects of Aspire. We also have our toggle buttons uh, that we're once up in the uh, upper right here on kind of in the drawing space along with the uh, view controls. I'm seeing a couple newer icons here. Oh, these are nice, uh, looking like we are able to turn much faster uh, by toggling the uh, snapping on and off. Uh, and I do apologize if any of this was in the prior version, I just didn't ever see it or notice it. Uh, but I'm liking this because it's oftentimes that I do like to have the uh, smart uh, snapping on. But when I'm tracing like a, a bitmap or something manually, uh, that smart snapping kind of becomes a little bit of annoyance. So it is nice to be able to turn that on and off right here along with the snapping. Now let's take a look over on our design tab. In our tabs across here, it looks like we've uh, no longer have a modeling tab because it looks like all the modeling features are on the design tab, which uh, makes that convenient, uh, not having to flip back and forth between the modeling and the design. So let's start at the top. The file operations all appear to be the same, just new icons. Import a component, 3D model, bitmap, the export uh, model to a STL. I apologize, that one might be new, but it could have been in existence. It's one that I wouldn't use too often. Creating vectors, we have uh, circles, stars, or dimensions, all appearing to be roughly the same. The transform vectors, slightly reorganized, but we have uh, the move, stretch, rotate, mirror, distortion and uh, alignment tools and we do have the option to show them all on the current drawing tab Let's see where they show up okay alignment tools almost running out of real estate on the bottom but it is uh, still has room editing the objects we have the standard selection node editing the transform mode allowing scale and rotating Grouping, ungrouping, just different icons. Everything appears to be the same functions, just nice newer icons. Again, much cleaner look. The offset tools or the alignment tools appear to be the same. The offset and layout. Again, I don't use the uh, aspects of Aspire all that much to know what has or has not changed 
down here, it looks like we do have uh, a couple possible other ones. And again, it could be that I'm just not uh, used to it, uh, but I believe this component offsetting might be new. Again, um, a couple uh, possible new modeling icons. All right, so that is uh, the design. Let's take a look at sheets. It appears to be roughly the same layers. Again, looking the same. The components, uh, this uh, component tree uh, list here looks like it is mirrored now also in the drop down above the drawing section and then clip art. So going back to the design tab, everything is looking pretty clean here. Let's go ahead and see what uh, drawing looks like. Let's sketch out a rectangle that looks to be about the same. There is one item that I did read about is the ability to draw on the 3D view now. So let's take a look at that. So I will apply this circle and then close. Let's take a look at the 3D view. Ah, look at that. We do have our drawing on the 3D view. Clicking on the drawing, can we move? We certainly, oh, look at this. We got some numbers that pop up and change. Looks like it's possible that we might be able to change these right here. So let's go six. Okay, that's the location where we want that to be. Oh, look at this. We could change, possibly go to eight inches. Oh, that is nice. Yeah, we could change sizes. I could even add in the radius there. Snapping appears to be functional, just is in the standard drawing. Let's check out the scissors. They may only be functional in the 2D view. So it's still nice to be able to draw and move things around in the 3D view. It looks like some of the edit objects uh, are not possible, but still the drawing aspects on the 3D view is, is a, a nice feature to have. All right, so now that we have uh, something drawn here, let's take a look at what we have for the toolpath tab. Let's switch to the toolpath side, and we have a nice graphic here that, uh, let's see if I remember, did I set the Z0 to the top of the material? I did. Material surface that is uh, stands out nice and clear. Uh, again, that may have been in the older versions, but it is uh, seems to be a little bit more clear on where we have the Z0 set just by a quick glance of seeing that uh, highlighting there. The tool pathing, drilling, pocketing, everything seems to be about right except for this sketch tool pathing. Uh, appears to be new. Uh, looks like this is going to give us a an outline or a uh, sketch of an image. We'll give that a try. We'll have to download an image or import a bitmap, it appears. But that looks like that is something possibly useful. At our tool databases, uh, being able to delete, add, our load layering tools are there. Creating a merge toolpath. Ah, keep out zones. That looks like a new icon. That is uh, interesting. So keep out zones. Create a keep out zone. Let's give this a try. I think we might need another uh, drawing here. It's just. Uh, Draw in a couple circles that we want a toolpath. And um, let's go ahead and say that we've uh, put a couple clamps or something in the way here um, as this circle. We want to have that circle as the area to keep away from. So let's go ahead and see what this looks like. Do you have to 
create a selection and create from selection. Ah, there we go. So we will close that. And does that stay? It does. So again, we'll close and let's go ahead and toolpath just a profile and see how that reacts. So go ahead and view. Going to go down. Not worried about too much here. Just uh, All right, so it looks like we've run into an area here that is going to be, yeah, look at that, that is uh, nice. So let's go ahead and just shift this uh, circle off to the right just a little, or the left, and do a recalculation of the pull paths. Looks like we lost the calculator icon, but it is a green recalculate all tool paths. All right, let's see what happens. Yeah, that jog just kind of bypasses that keep out zone. That is a possible useful feature for some. All right, well, I think I may have rambled on long enough uh, to see the, the majority of the changes in Aspire version 12.